normal magnets, but they're expensive. They're like 75 cents. This one's like 10 cents. So postcards, I can do plenty. You probably get hey? a pretty good return on some t-shirts. Or put the whole sequence on a t-shirt. I was considering that, but it's a lot of admin work, because then you have to figure out if I want to give people with the sequence. Then you have to figure out who wants a large, who wants a medium, do I have space right. to keep it? Postcard is the cheapest. But yeah, would be nice. I want to put on Make the- Make order from your website. Well, that's true, but I have to pre-print. But also I was thinking of doing it on a yoga belt. I even bought the belts and everything. Or on a mat, yeah. Matt would be, see, I'm thinking of something that won't take up space. Because I live in a very small apartment. I don't want to have to keep right. so can't many. Can't have inventory. Yeah, can't keep that at home, so that's all right. Already my husband and I have these discussions about, is there enough room for all of us? And I said, what do you mean all of us? It's just two of us. No, you, me, and all the storage. Oh, I understand. Storage right? Sorry. Hmm. Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. You will see to my left a very motivated guest today, Ron Thomas. Ron is a producer here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. m and Studios. Um, these, these are the studios where we tape. We typically tape in the larger studio. We are now in a what we call the closed studio, which is much smaller. But today it's nice and cozy. It's just Ron and me on the mat, freezing cold out there. But Ron and I have decided that we're going to get our chakras moving. Ron, before I move on, I'd like to ask you, how did you feel when you left yesterday? We were talking about breaking an internal sweat. Were you all warmed up inside? Was it easy to get back home? Were you energized? I felt really good. Uh, Feels good, right? Yeah, because I, 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 for years I, I pounded my, my limbs playing basketball and right. running on concrete long distances and just all that punishment. Now all this high impact stuff, yeah. our postures are very low impact if you notice. There's no jumping. Some yoga schools do actually encourage you to get into postures. They jump into the postures. But you know, as we grow older, we really don't want all this high impact stuff. We want low impact, but high energy postures. The postures that'll help us feel good, even though we don't have to go off of the floor. Yoga is very pro-gravity. We move wherever the body takes us. We get deeper and deeper. Now that I'm old, I'm <laughs> realizing what I miss. No, well, no, you haven't missed it. In you high actually, school, I yeah. had a a classmate of mine told me, yeah, you gotta do yoga. Yoga is really a great thing. You did some meditation. You remember you told me you yeah. tried some transcendental, transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation, yeah. Right. I thought I had I thought I had everything figured out. All wrapped up. <laughs> but I didn't. You didn't realize, you didn't count on the, there being a physical side. You thought yoga was all about spiritual stuff. Yeah. Growing up, that's probably how it was projected. 
today it's projected more as what they call the power yoga or ashtanga they give it a name ashtanga and ashtanga really literally means something else it's the eight limbs of yoga ashtanga remember that posture we're talking about eight limbs that is a physical posture whereas yoga itself ashtanga yoga has eight limbs of life something like moses 10 tablets or 10 commandments you have personal discipline social discipline breathing posture practice you have pratyahara pratyahara means withdrawal of senses so if somebody says something to you you don't let it bother you yes you hear it you respond but you don't let it affect you there's a grievance in the family or you don't get overly you don't get into extreme emotion so that's pratyahara withdrawal of senses and then you have concentration you have meditation of course a sublimation where everyone sees a purple light above their head but yeah yesterday when we did all that movement we were getting in and out of the sun salutation. I could feel that too. It was cold outside, but it really helped to warm up because all the blood rushing to our head when we did the inversions, that's really helping yeah. us energize ourselves, our brain. Well, I, when I was young in college and stuff, I had no Banu Suresh to look to. There was no Banu Suresh at the time. I was there, but I was somewhere else and I was doing my own high impact stuff. You were on the other side of the globe. <laughs> I was on so. the other side of the globe, actually. We lived in Australia for a long time. So when yeah. you were younger, you were probably here in the U.S. Were you always in New York? I was always in New York. In New York. So you're probably most still here. Most of the time, yeah. Where were you born? Uh, on the Columbia University campus. Yeah. <laughs> on campus? Wow. They have a hospital. It was called a women's hospital in those days. Right, right. So now was your mom there at the time? <laughs> she was on campus. Hey, Columbia University. Well, that's a teaching <laughs> hospital, so. You it were teaching fun. in hospitals, too. What, what were you teaching? Oh, no. Well, I was uh, a counselor at the... Uh, right, right. Oh, you were helping Club. students. Okay. So you were helping uh, young people. I find taught photography, way. actually. That's nice. Yeah. So I know you had that side to you about taking pictures and stuff. I didn't yeah. know you actually taught it because that's when you really find, the, you feel the joy of it. Yeah, I taught photography in high school and college. Very nice. So do you, do you still handle cameras a yeah. lot? Well, I know as a producer you do. Yeah, I do now. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I have other people hold the cameras now. Right, because <laughs> you but produce I do, your own Well, camera. actually, I do because I do it by remote control now. That's right. You do, you have your own show, Big Talk, Big which Talk. airs every Thursday. Yes. One to two. I'm not gonna say it anymore that Ron competes for our time because you don't. You do no, it we once share. a week. We share the airtime, but you know, you can always it's once a week and it's one hour, it's a great show. I've watched it a couple of times. And I noticed that there's a lot of high energy right there as well, not just in our yoga program, in Ron's show as well. So it's always current topics, is that right? Yeah, well, people like to talk, call and talk about politics. And right, it's a call-in show too, right? Yeah, it's a call-in show. There you go. So not that I'm just going to plug Ron in, we're also going to plug our own show, but yes, it's, it's fun to be able to, it's a challenge to be able to share your views with others on Ron's show as well. But if you want to come stretch with us, remember we air five days a week, we tape twice a week. We air Monday through Friday, 1.30 in the afternoon Eastern time, that's New York time, on time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. And recently, Ron, we've also begun airing and all the other, but at the time of airing this episode on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, which is where we film these episodes, we have also begun to air our previous episodes in all the other four boroughs in New York. That's Staten Island, it's a daily show there, uh, Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. We are a once a, week, a weekly show. I think in Queens we air twice in the week, Wednesday and Friday. So and we're also on the World Wide Web. We're all, that's right. We're also on the web, mnn.org, manhattanneighborhoodnetwork.org, just look us up on MNN3 Yoga Express, Y O G A X P R E S S. No E, no E, no E. No E, no E. No E before the X. Y O G A. That's also a website, yogaexpress.com. You could also go to my website to get an idea, a sense of what our discussions would revolve around right here in the studios. If you want to stretch with us, we will share a copy of Yoga Secrets, my third title, which has eight plus two ailment specific cards which means you have eight sequences which help prevent common ailments like arthritis asthma constipation diabetes hypertension hypertension lumbago piles and sciatica piles is the british british english word for hemorrhoids lumbago lumbago is low back pain 
I heard the three students refer to that. Yeah. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> I didn't know. We've got to talk about my, that. I didn't know. I was, when I was in junior high, they used to, have, they used to come on every afternoon. Now you got to pay for them. Are you going to pay to watch those episodes? Are you going to buy the DVDs? or? In about 50 years, people might have to pay to watch us. Or have a special... While we're still free, enjoy stretching with us. Ron, I was going to ask you, yesterday you chose the sun salutation. Good choice. Between today and tomorrow, would you like to do the seated? Because sun salutation most people yeah, standing. Seated, yeah. Let's do seated, and then tomorrow maybe we'll do prone and supine. How's that? Sounds good? Okay. People keep asking me for these cards. Please. Feel free. We, that reminds me. If you come on our show, we will give you a fridge magnet with the 48 simple stretches. 48 stretches that target 48 simple stretches, low impact, highly effective simple stretches that target 32 major muscle groups, glands, and organs in under 20 minutes to address eight common ailments. So you come on the show, you get the fridge magnet as well as a postcard with these simple stretches. So there's no escape, no excuses not to stretch. Let's do that, Ron. Let's get into the seated postures. Before we move on, I'd like to thank our facilitator, Richard Swanson, for all these gobos, the studio lights, and the sound system. Our director, Josie and Heard, under Richard's guidance. Thank you so much for making this happen, Josie. And you're flying solo today. We appreciate it. Ron, are you ready? Shall we do the seated ones today? Are we yes. good for that? All right. Let's come on all fours. Viewers at home or at work, if you're stretching with us, come on all fours. Your hands are directly below your shoulders. Knees are directly below your hips. Keep your toes curled in, and we're going to go on profiles so around. You face me, so yeah, we're facing each other. So this way, both cameras will pick us up. You can see us on profile as well as from front. <coughs> Fingers are nicely splayed. Your toes are curled in. We're in neutral position right now. Marjaria or cat. And Josiane, this posture is dedicated to you. Our director loves cats. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to inhale, lift our buttocks, chin, and chest up as we dip the torso. And then as we exhale, we'll uncurl the toes, arch the back. So we take, make a concave with the middle part of our body. Let's try that. Inhale. Bring your elbows close to your body. That will help you go deep. Uncurl your toes, arch your back. Let's try that one more time. Curl your toes in, inhale, dip your torso, lift your chin, chest and buttocks. Fold your elbows, bring your elbows close to your body, lift your chin up. That's it. Uncurl your toes, arch your back. Curl your toes in, let's come into neutral position. I want to point out something. Marjaria or cat, literally in Sanskrit, Marjaria means cat. It is a wonderful undulating motion of the spine. So the spine goes in, comes out. So you have a beautiful internal massage for the spine. Talk about internal heat. You can also massage your glands and organs and your spine internally. Let's come bring our knees closer to our hands. Let's come up on our knees. Watch your knees, Ron. I know you've hurt yourself. We're not going to do too many knee benders. Well, and you can make your adaptations. Mm -hmm. Feel free. If you've got a tender knee today or you've injured yourself, feel free to allow your body make its own adaptations. We're going to take you through a posture called Ustra Asan. Ustra is camel in Sanskrit. We are aiming to reach our hands to our heels. And doing that, we open up our chest into costal muscles. The cartilaginous muscle between the rib cage, the intercostals, they get a beautiful stretch and you open up your pectoral, so your chest muscles. So here's what we'll do. Here's how we'll start. Place your hands on your buttocks. Push your elbows back. That already opens up your chest muscles or your pectorals. Inhale. Your knees are at hip width apart. Now, remember, you will see that Ron and I both have the tops of our feet flat on the mat. You can keep your toes in if you want. You can curl them in, but remember, and of course, when you curl them in, you feel more, a lot more steady. It's a little bit of a balance issue keeping your feet flat, but there's less pressure on the knees. When you keep your toes curled in, there's more pressure on your knees. As we grow older, synovial fluid dries up, so you don't want to hurt your knees. I'm going to uncurl my toes. Inhale. Exhale, glide your palms down the back of your thighs very gently. Right hand reaches for the right heel and you don't have to go all the way back. Do any adaptation you need to. Left hand, 
goes all the way to the left heel. Once you've made that connection, tilt your head back, tilt your pelvis forward and hold. Now, if you do not wish to go all the way back today, that's okay. Place your palms, keep that connection, place it down the back of your thighs, wherever you will, your hands will take you today, that's fine. You just want to engage your low back, make sure you strengthen them, tilt your head back and keep breathing. Inhale, let's come up. And let's sit on our heels. Sutta Vajra. You would have felt a stretch in the front of your quads too, right? Oh, that's why well, I As you went back. That's why you had to release a little bit. But that's fine. Your knee is still tender. Is it your right knee? Yes. You want to get off once in a while. Every now and then, feel free to give mm. yourself a break. You don't have to go non-stop into the postures. If you're feeling a little sore today, feel free to make your adaptations. Now, there is one more, and you don't have to get into this one, Ron. What I would do is keep the legs outstretched. We're going to go back all the way, but what you want to do is rest your elbows on the floor and tilt your head back. So that way, you're engaging your low back. So when, when I go back all the way, I'm going to have my knees in. Supta Vajra, Supine Diamond. Vajra is diamond, or Vajra Vaira. Now, Ron, you want to try and lower your right elbow to the ground. I'm going to make my adjustments. And then your left elbow. When both the elbows are down, you can extend your legs, Ron. The, your knee is still tender. Tilt your head back. And then if you've got your knees folded under you, you want to make sure your knees are on the floor. Do not lift your knees off of the floor. When you do that, you might hurt your ankles. So you want to keep your knees down. Inhale. Press with the palms very gently. Let's come up. The idea in this posture is to strengthen your low back. Wow. So if you had your legs extended the way Ron did, his knees are a little tender still, you still will get your little back bend by keeping your elbows on the floor. If you go down all the way, of course, you may not get that little compacting of the low back. Now you're going to fold over, fold forward. And again, Ron, don't bend your knee because it's going to be a little awkward for you to bend just one knee. But I know your right knee is still sore. What we're going to do is just fold over, shashank or rabbit. Literally, inhale. And literally, we try to look like a rabbit. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together. Now, you can keep your palms flat. You can cross your fingers over. You could have your index fingers. That I like to call this the <laughs> lightning conductor posture. Now, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed over because if I don't do that, I don't get a grip, I come apart. Exhale, fold from the hip, shashank or rabbit. Lead with your chest. Try to get your forehead down before your arms or your hands come down. Now, once your forehead is down, bring your palms down. Now, if you're sitting on your knees with your knees folded, you want to be sure you, your buttocks don't come up all the way. Although it would probably look more like a rabbit. You'd probably look a lot more like a rabbit with your buttocks off. You can lift it a little bit. But if you are sitting on your knees, what you want to do is try and press your buttocks as low as you can. Keep your elbows off of the floor. Palms are flat. Inhale. Engage your low back muscles. Place your palms together. Inhale. Come up with a straight back. Anytime you need to, that's the joy of yoga. You can make your adaptations. Exhale and release. Anytime you need to, please, please make sure that you allow your body its own adaptations. Here, we're going to sit down. Your left heel goes under the right buttock. From Shashank, we're going to take you through a posture called Ardha Matsendra. Ardha is half, Matsya is fish. Matsendra, Lord of the Fishes, or half, Lord of the Fishes. Literally, Matsendra was the name of a sage as well, so I figured he might have sat in this posture for a very mm -hmm. long time. Tuck your left heel. This posture is also known as half spinal twist in North America. Cross your right foot over the left knee. You want to face the toes on your right foot to the front of the mat. Now, Ron and I may be facing each other so that both cameras can pick us up. It'll either pick up Ron or me in profile, or you could see us in the front. But the idea is so you know exactly where your feet go, where the feet, the soles of the feet will point. The left sole faces the back of the room. Right foot is flat on the floor. Push your right knee in with your hands and then talk your upper body to the right. So if it's a half spinal twist, you're already caught away there by pushing it and 
stroking your upper body. So hold on to your right knee with your right hand and then inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip your left elbow over the right knee and then I'm going to help myself. I'm going to try and bring my knee a little closer to my hand. Once I've made that connection, take, I'm going to take my right hand behind me and try to twist as far back as I can. Some of our participants can go deeper. We all have different anatomical proportions. If you find this is a little painful for you, you might want to wiggle your right foot further forward. That takes some of the tension off of your knees. Turn back. Inhale. Let's release the hands first. And then untangle the legs. Let's switch legs. Now, if you do not wish to cross your legs all the way over today, you still will feel the twist. If you want to keep your right foot, or in this case now, the other foot, away from your knees, to the inside of your knees, you will still be able to turn. The idea is to feel the twist. So let's try that on the other side. Tuck your right heel under your left buttock. Also, I don't know if you found this, Ron, but sometimes our body cooperates a lot more on one side. Well, yes. One side feels more flexible, mm -hmm. right? They have a dominant side. That's right. <laughs> the sun side and the moon side. Cross your left foot over the right knee. And if you don't want to do that today, that's fine. You can place it beside the right knee. Now, if you're okay to get it over, make whatever adjustments you need, need to. The sole of the right foot faces the back of the room. Push your left knee in with your left hand. Talk your upper body to the left. You're already quarter way there. Now, left knee is up. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale. Dip your right elbow over your left knee, and then I'm going to help myself try and hold on to the right knee, or you can hold on to a part of your shorts or any garment or trousers that you're wearing. You want to make the connection. You don't have to get your elbows up all the way. If you want to take your elbows to the side, you could do that. The idea is to get the twist, remember? So I'm going to see if I can take myself there. And then take the left hand from behind. And if you want to ease any tension in this twist, you can wiggle your left foot forward and then go back. If you're very comfortable, you don't feel the stretch at all, as some of you might uh, be in that position, you might want to bring your hands a little closer and bring your left foot a little closer to your knee, and that gives you a greater challenge. Let's turn to look back. Inhale, release the right hand first. Untangle your legs. <laughs> It feels good when you come, when we untwist ourselves, right? Oh, yes. Extend your left leg out. So your left leg is already... <laughs> we are literally wringing ourselves out. That's exact. That's a beautiful word. We're literally wringing our upper and lower body in the opposite direction. And we're depriving, like we said, I think in the last episode, we're depriving the upper and lower glands and organs of oxygen and fresh blood for just a few seconds. When you untangle, when we untwist or unring, if there is such a word, remember, I'm not a native English speaker, so you have to forgive me for mistakes in grammar. But when you unring yourself, fresh blood rushes in, takes fresh oxygen, and it energizes the glands and organs. That's why it feels I'm sweating. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, and you can feel it, right? You can feel the heat. Extend your left leg out in front of you. Fold your right knee in. Right foot is close to the inside of the upper left thigh. Hold your right ankle. Right foot is flat. Left foot is flexed. Hold your right ankle with your left hand. And then inhale the right arm up. Exhale. Fold from the hip. Wrap your right hand around your right knee. We'll tell you the name of this posture in just a moment. This might be a good time to use a belt. Uh, you have one. Okay. You know how to help yourself with it? This might be a good time if you want to use a belt. Feel free. Now, we have about five minutes left. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to attempt to hold my fingers together. Fortunately for me, today, I've been able to make that connection. But if I cannot, you could also do what Ron is doing, which is a great idea. Use To help you make that connection, use a belt, a face wash, or a towel to connect your two hands. And once you've made that connection, wiggle your hands a little closer every day till you're ready to let go of the belt or the prop. Now turn, take your left shoulder back, look over your right shoulder. Marij Asan, Marij literally was the name of a saint, but Marij also means ray of light. Inhale, release the hands first. Extend the right leg out, 
and let's twist on the other side. Fold the left foot in. Left foot is close to the inside of the upper right thigh. Hold the left ankle with your right hand. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, fold from the hip. Wrap your left hand around your left knee. Take your right hand from behind and hold. Clasp the opposite fingers. Now I find this side a little tighter than the other side. I just about managed to hold my fingers. Now if my fingers come apart, I'm going to use a belt. Now if you can my see, Ron, you can get, oh you can see, they can see you on the monitor, right there, yeah. I can see you on the monitor. So watch what Ron is doing to you. find that side is a little loser, right? right. Yeah, I think we all have a good side. <laughs> Look over your left shoulder and then open up your right shoulder so that way you get a good opening for the pectorals on the upper right side of your chest and you get a tricep stretch on the upper left side. How many postures do you know, Ron, that actually help you stretch the triceps, right? And also, actually, tricep stretches are more common, but bicep stretches you don't see much, right? No. Usually bicep strengthen. Inhale, release the hands first. Keep your right leg extended. Bring your left knee down to the floor. Janu Sesha, head to knee. Sesha is head, Janu is, um, Janu is knee. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep your right foot flexed. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Exhale, fold from the hip. If your fingers get over your toes or on the soles of your feet today, give yourself a little bit of a massage. If you're over the big toe, feel free to massage the big toe. Remember, nerves that end in the big toe lead to the eyes. So it's like giving yourself an optic massage. Massage for the eyes. Hold it. And pull yourself forward. Feel that wonderful stretch on your hamstrings below your left, below your right leg. The back of your right leg. Inhale. Let's come up. Exhale and release. Let's switch legs. Fold the right leg in. Extend the left leg out. Flex your left foot. Remember, when you flex your foot, you get more of a stretch for the back of the legs. You point your toes. You're really stretching the front of the legs. Yoga is about stretching the back of the body. At least our sequence is. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Exhale, fold from the hip. We have a couple of minutes, I believe, and we're going to try and steal a few more postures. Janu Sesha, head to knee. The aim is to try and reach for your knee with your forehead. Inhale, let's come up. Keep your arms where they are, up there, above the head. Extend the right leg out. Flex both your feet. Paschimottanasan, Paschimottan, bird beak. Exhale, fold. Hold on to your big toes. If, you're over, if your fingers are over the soles of your feet, give yourself a little massage. I'm going to hold my big toes and pull my body forward. Paschimottan or bird beak. Inhale. Let's come up. Exhale and release. Our titles are rolling. I'd like to thank our director, Josie and Hurt. Thank you so much for holding the fort today. You're flying solo. We appreciate it. Richard Swanson, thank you for the studio lights. Tuck your right heel under the left buttock. Right, uh, your left heel under the right buttock and the right foot crosses over the left knee. Typically, this posture is supposed to align one knee over the other. It's called cow face or go mukha. Go is cow, mukha is face. Right knee is up. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip your left elbow over the back of your neck. Take your right hand from behind. Clasp the opposite hands. Once you've made that connection, this is another moment to use any props you need to. Remember, props are like training wheels. You only need to use them as long as you really need them. Once you've made that connection with your bare hands, let go of your props. Hold it. Inhale, release the hands, and let's switch legs. Go mukha, cow face. Tuck your right heel.